This is the story of an idea. The idea of confining a plasma with a temperature over 100 million degrees, five times hotter than the core of the sun, in a magnetic cage produced entirely by a system of current-carrying coils outside the plasma. We call this plasma cage a stellarator. The stellarator must have the form of a donut, referred to by physicists as a torus. Particles which find themselves within the cage must follow its magnetic field lines to a first approximation. And if the field lines are bent so as to form closed surfaces in space, then escape becomes impossible and particles can only repeatedly circle the torus. Shaping of the magnetic surfaces plays a key role in determining the properties of the stellarator, allowing simultaneous improvement of plasma confinement and stability. Determining the ideal shape is far from simple, however, and only became possible at the end of the 1980s using a computer-aided optimization process. The result of this optimization is Wendelstein 7X, which possesses a five-fold symmetry indicated by different colors for each of the identical sections. Only the outermost magnetic surface is visible at the moment, but there are countless additional surfaces within. If we cut through the torus, we see the puncture points of representative field lines which form some of these surfaces. It is important to note that each surface is well separated from its neighbors, making the concentric structure of the magnetic cage apparent. Only in this manner is it possible to contain the enormous thermal energy of the plasma for a sufficient length of time. We are now acquainted with the physical idea at the heart of Wendelstein 7X. But to learn something about the technological realization of the device, we must enter the Torus Hall. This is the experimental center of a research institute in Greifswald, Germany, opened during the year 2000, and given the task of successfully constructing and then operating an optimized stellarator of this magnitude for the very first time. Our path leads through the assembly hall. A massive portal slowly opens, and we see the stellarator in technical detail. Weighing more than 750 tons, it is a device of imposing dimensions. Measuring more than 15 meters in diameter, and reaching a height of 5 meters, fully surrounded by its many faceted support systems, it is difficult to recognize individual features, even from a bird's eye view. To ease the process, individual components belonging to a common system appear in the same color. Let us take a closer look, limiting ourselves for the moment to one-fifth of the torus. Innermost is the vacuum vessel, which in its shape follows that of the magnetic surfaces which it will encompass. The magnetic field is produced by a system of current-carrying coils with complicated shapes which must be maneuvered into place over the vacuum vessel. Although within the vessel temperatures of 100 million degrees will prevail under experimental conditions, the coils, only 30 centimeters outside, must be maintained at a temperature near absolute zero. To be more precise, minus 270 degrees Celsius is required for the coils to remain superconducting that is, without electrical resistance, so that the magnetic field may be sustained indefinitely. In addition to the main set of non-planar coils, simpler, untwisted coils are also provided to increase the experimental flexibility. We now direct our attention to the region within the vacuum vessel. The metallic luster indicates the diverter and the wall armor, which are the only components which must withstand direct contact with the plasma. Next we follow the trajectory of a single particle on its flight along a magnetic field line, thereby tracing out the otherwise invisible magnetic surface. For better orientation, the puncture points of several field lines are shown for the characteristic cross-sections we encountered earlier. With a strength of 2.5 tesla, 100,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field, 
plasma particles remain closely tied to their field lines and are well confined. course of our journey, we have already noticed numerous openings in the vacuum vessel. These are necessary for the creation and heating of the plasma, for access to internal components and for diagnostic purposes. To ensure that vacuum conditions can be maintained in the presence of these openings, Numerous ports, which protrude beyond the coils like the quills of a porcupine, are required. The superconducting coils are supplied with current by an electrical bus system and with liquid helium as coolant by a cryogenic pipework. In our animation, the assembly depicted here seems to float in space, when in fact, its actual weight is now approaching 100 tons. To bear this dead weight, and to withstand the enormous forces which the current carrying coils would otherwise exert on the system, requires a sturdy support structure, which will ultimately take the form of a central ring. All components now disappear beneath layers of thermal insulation used to ensure the coil system remains at the frigid temperatures necessary for superconductors, and the entire construction is then enclosed within the so-called cryostat. Now the complicated structures hidden within can only be guessed at. At this point, we have completed one-fifth of the machine, and our animation mimics closely the actual steps performed during the assembly. Repeating the process five times, and joining the individual sections finally closes the torus. Here, once again, the entire coil system is depicted, with its periodicity of five especially obvious when viewed from above. Enclosed in its outer vessel, the Stellarator now bears some resemblance to a fictional spacecraft. Prior to takeoff, however, further auxiliary systems are needed. To fulfill its difficult mission, Wenderstein 7X requires a powerful heating system capable of bringing a plasma to a temperature of 100 million degrees. The heating will be done mainly with microwaves, and the system for producing and directing these powerful waves also demands a dauntingly complex infrastructure. Additionally, future experimental operation will require a large number of diagnostics to measure and monitor plasma performance. A number of these must be located in the immediate vicinity of the machine, while others can be situated at a greater distance. Thus, the technical realization of a large optimized stellarator is far more complex than one would have expected, given the apparent simplicity of the original idea. In the end, the device and its immediate infrastructure fill not only the entire Taurus Hall, but extend throughout all the neighboring buildings as well. <laughs>